Hello, everyone. It is my great pleasure to welcome you for uh, yet another Vestok. Uh, and today we will be talking uh, about very exciting and very hot topic, uh, which is NFT uh, and metaverse and how it changes uh, what we consider uh, the term of uh, ownership. And it is very, very special uh, this talk uh, because we are doing it with uh, our partners uh, from Poland uh, 2.0. And I have a co-host uh, here, uh, Łukasz. And it is also uh, another reason why it's special because uh, uh, it is the second part of the talk that uh, first started on, on Poland 2.0. Uh, summit and and you can watch the first part uh, on on under uh, YouTube uh, and we have very very special guests and we had a very cool discussion already in the backstage so we are very happy that you're here uh, it will be definitely very excited uh, exciting uh, talk to to listen to uh, and without further ado I would like to uh, introduce you to first my co-host. Łukasz i uh, Anna Kruszewska i Bartosz Piliczki. All right, uh, pleasure to meet you guys. Nice to be here. Um, hopefully we'll have a fruitful discussion, right? Yeah, uh, I like to give a little bit of uh, uh, time for, for our speakers to uh, talk about themselves. So, uh, Anna, can you start? Um, thank you, Adrian. Um, not to prolong this introduction too much, um, my name is Anna Kruszewska. I'm a lawyer partner in boutique IP law firm in Warsaw. And uh, uh, as a lawyer who's connected to new technologies, intellectual property rights, and media, I have been, I have this pleasure to. Uh, to deal with current, uh, current issues connected with NFT, Metaverse, and a number of other problems. Mm, so I'd be happy to share my experience, my thoughts, to complain a little bit and try to bring some awareness to everyone who's listening to us today. Thank you. And the other part of this discussion is uh, uh, Bartosz Bielicki, uh, founder and CEO of Smart Forum. Hello, guys. Uh... Thank you for uh, invitation. Yes, um, my name is Bartek Bilicki. I'm, I'm CEO and founder of uh, Smart Verum. We took a nice uh, art market, uh, and we focus on fine art, so the traditional uh, part of, of art market. And uh, yes, I've, I've been involved in blockchain area since uh, 2016, and in general in IT industry since 2008. And uh, yes, today we will talk about NFT and metaverse. I'm so happy and yeah, let's start. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I... Sure. Um, so uh, since we already want to have some warm up at the beginning, um, let's have a short recap about meta meta what metaverse is. Bartek, perhaps you want to tell us a bit about how is it related, for example, to like sims in 2010 <laughs> like that yeah yeah it's it's a perfect question for for the very beginning of our talk because um yeah there is a lot of controversy in this topic and i believe that at the very beginning it's good to define well what we are talking about uh so uh it is somehow connected to the sims and it is somehow connected to um to second life but in fact, we should um, uh, focus on uh, three pillars of metaverse uh, that are very important. It's it's a key point of, of metaverse. metaverse. Uh, one is uh, open world. So every single metaverse should be an open world. I will, I will describe more a bit later. And uh, it should be a massive multiplayer. Um, and it should be blockchain-based powered by blockchain um, technology. So uh, yeah, the first thing, it's it's a parallel world, right? So we can just uh, jump into this world. It should be open so everybody can uh, build it up, uh, can create it. You can uh, become a neighbor of someone who is very famous, for example, Snoop Dogg, right? <laughs> and uh, you can create your house. Uh, uh, possibilities are unlimited so it's not like that that you have let's say five colors and two different bricks to to build no uh, you can just uh import some minecraft models <laughs> yes yeah like like in minecraft but even better 
Of course, there are uh, concepts like uh, Sandbox, which is uh, very uh, similar to, to, to Minecraft. But anyway, we are going into the um, ocean of the metaverse where uh, there is no limits and uh, it has to be multiplayer. So if you, if you have some um, experience with The Sims, The Sims is one player game. Uh, so it's something different. You are working on your sim or your on, on, on your sims. And here in metaverse uh, or metaverses, because we are not talking about one, one only you know, solution to one game or game-like experience, because in fact, it's not a game. It's, it's a playable concept. Uh, so um, here there is, uh, we need a massive multiplayer uh, functionality. So we can uh, meet each other everyone can create an avatar or even set of avatars so you can create different identities it's uh, also source of uh, risk um and it should be blockchain based so uh, uh so so it should implement cryptocurrencies because uh we want to sell something buy something using a uh, digital currency uh, and uh, something that you are buying or selling trading uh, it's a digital object. So uh, on top of the blockchain, we have a NFT, which which stands for non fungible tokens. So yes, uh, those uh, three pillars are very important just to you know um, um, recognize which project is metaverse and which is just a virtual reality something. And uh, I would add one thing more that mm -hmm. for me it's very important. Uh, at to add that uh, it should be web-based application because it's very important today to just, you know, you're, you're uh, exploring world. And if this is a web-based application, in the URL, you will uh, have constantly changing um, coordinates. So you can just copy URL and send to the friend. And yes, that's, that's, that's very uh, useful. So yeah, that's that's the metaverse right now. Where is the where where we are going? Uh, it's uh, yeah, the ocean of the possibilities. <laughs> Bartosz, is it is it multi multiplayer or multi live? Uh, more like, isn't it? Yeah, multi live because yeah, as 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 I said, it's it's more like game like experience. It's not not a game, but but uh, Ruth, if, Ruth um, from the game and from the game, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pl plenty of titles that you can just play inside of the metaverse, like for example, Axie Infinity. So, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, what you said about the trading values, cryptocurrencies within uh, metaverses is actually a really good segue to to the next questions that we have, uh, and it is uh, something that uh, uh, a lot of people might understand uh, quite naturally but uh, when when you when you speak about it 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 causes uh, a little bit of confusion so the 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 value uh, signaling and scarcity signaling of uh, of nft uh, and uh, like items in 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 metaverse uh, if uh, can you can you explain that a little bit and like do uh, do those terminologies like apply almost one-to-one -to, -one to both NFT and uh, Metaverse, or, or it's, it's slightly different? Yeah, Metaverse is uh, um, built on top of the NFT, on top of the blockchain. So yes, uh, definitely we use NFTs just to build um, whole world. And there are titles like, for example, uh, Crypto Voxels, where every single um, a script matter is 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 like NFT, so you can just trade it um, inside of the application or even outside on uh, external marketplaces. So yeah, it's a beautiful world where people just uh, love to create something. It's 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 completely new chapter in um, online experience. People interact with each other and talk with each other, even we can say touch virtually somehow. And, um, but uh, when we talk about the um, uh, scarcity, it's uh, the key point because uh, I believe that NFT is the f for the first time in the history of multimedia, 
uh, of the internet. Uh, it's uh, a well written, uh, well developed implementation of the value in the digital world. So that's that's the revolution. So uh, we can, um, in a in a clear way, definite way, uh, define uh, that some concept or object in a physical world or whatever in digital world belongs to somebody. Of course, belongs will trigger Anna and she will start. <laughs> I can already see She's already that. getting prepared. I think she's yeah, and, in the mood. <laughs> I, I'm I in, didn't in say her anything. Corner. <laughs> I'm in her corner somehow because I, 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 I see a lot of risk, but... Uh, in the very beginning, very basic, you know, understanding of the uh, possessing something, we uh, achieved uh, this uh, transferring from the physical uh, world to the digital world using NFTs, and that's the revolution. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, we have we, we, we should develop more. We we, we have to uh, work on. Uh, we have to cooperate with uh, legal people and so on. But uh, in fact, scarcity is is very important thing because. Yeah, let's assume. Uh, yeah, sell me this pen. <laughs> I know uh, that's that, from someone, that right? It's is fantastic, and um, uh, it, it works. Uh, the the value of this uh, pen is I don't know uh, close to zero, right? Because it's it's just a normal uh, pen. Uh, if I say that it's it's a Parker, uh, obviously it's not a Parker, but let's say it is a Parker. Uh, probably the value of this pen is I don't know twenty dollars. Uh, it's much better, right? Uh, but if I say that this is the, the last pen on this earth and there is no other, so I will limit scarcity to one, so the value will increase uh, very quickly, right? So this is what we can do using NFT. Uh, and of course, yes, we, we have to implement a uh, uh, legal part, but uh, that's the concept. I think it's a, it's a perfect time uh, to give uh, uh, Anna the voice uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and maybe she will tell us a little bit more on that uh, scarcity concept from, from the legal point of view. So, so that, that, that's really cool to, to hear. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bartosz, thank you for this beautiful description of metaverse and NFTs and uh, answering these ideas. To be clear here, I'm not against ideas, but um, I would like to bring some points on safety and results of these actions uh, towards reward. Because from legal point of view, the problem with metaverse or NFTs starts when they, you know, when people are expecting res results of their actions taken in metaverse or in uh, in connection to NFT in real world. This is the moment, uh, offline world. And th this is the moment then uh, that problems arise. And let me give you the example. Um, for example, I, th I think you heard, um, uh, most of you probably have heard that uh, that's one of the uh, NFT um, specialists in companies has bought something they thought was June bug, you know, which was a uh, which was just you know notes from creating the movie, as uh, and so on. And they thought that having these notes, uh, and a few of these notes actually allows them to create a movie, another you know movie based on uh, this work on this book, which was not true. Absolutely, they bought nothing legally. They bought, I'm sorry, <laughs> they bought nothing, and then and then paid for it like almost three million euros. So, ouch, ouch right? <laughs> ouch. <laughs> this uh, and they thought, and this is one of the misconceptions about NFT, and that actually when you buy one, you get something more than than you get something actually, because what what is NFT? Actually, this is a code. This is something that protects authenticity of, 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 of the transaction. But it doesn't mean you legally possess anything that this NFT is linked to. These are two different things. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm clear here now, and this is understandable what I'm, what yes, I'm saying. I, I, was, I was just thinking about it because, um, well, I guess some of us tried to buy some NFT uh, at some mm -hmm. point. And... Um, you know, let's say we have a painting, I mean, a digital art 
like mm-hmm. the one that was sold for seven million dollars recently, the mm-hmm. one on Browner or something. Um, and you know, it's like two hundred pixels by two hundred pixels, and it goes for for seven millions. But then my immediate thought is like, I can take a screenshot, right? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, and the that's fact a that digital yeah. thing. Yes, and if the, because to be clear. NFT transaction may be connected with actual, you know, legal transaction with a legal contract that may entitle you to, you know, to, to this work that has been tokenized. And if it, it is, then we don't have legal issue because, for example, you may acquire copyrights to this item. But if it isn't, and this is, I would say, 99 of the cases and 99 percentage, that means what you got. Uh, legally means that you can actually download this uh, this uh, file and basically that's it. Is it worth a few million dollars? Up to you. And well, that, moreover, it doesn't, you know, at least in my opinion, it doesn't look and it doesn't have any other value than exactly the same file copied, uh, copied by someone else. Like when in terms of originality of value, as uh, original um, original copy would ha- would have in reality, the original file is a misconception. But so that's maybe, another problem, right? Maybe more on the like you know abstract side because when we buy things in real world, um, you know we don't have the ability to actually move atom atoms and exactly copy things as they are. Mm-hmm. We have this ability in in simple simpler works of art. You could theoretically think that any software company, uh, all of its things are free because they are made from bits, which we can kind of manipulate. But, um, well, do you think that with increasing complexity of of things, we can buy with with NFTs? You know, like uh, you can, let's say, in the future, buy Picasso and it consists of so much data that that copying it, you know, like by by a screenshot or something is infeasible. Mm. Or things that are basically more complex, um, and I would say better encrypted, uh, that it will actually, you know, uh, make them have real value in that sense. Like, in terms of originality, like three D right? houses, for example, you know, mm-hmm. things you 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 can't really, you know, you need special, you know, program and everything to actually uh, mm-hmm. re- re- recompose, recreate. Well. Maybe, possibly, possibly. I don't know. We, we, I think we're very early on uh, when it comes to technology and use of this technology in this way. But don't get me wrong. You can use NFT as a way of secure uh, method uh, of, trans- of making transactions. That's possible because for now, if you want to buy a house in Poland, let's say, what you need to have, you have to conclude, you have to conclude agreements via notary deed, right? That's what we have to do. You have to go to the notary public and make this very special contract. I don't uh, in a special form because of the safety um, of the market, but I don't see, you know, any problem with ex- actually replacing notary public with NFT technology. Why not? It's even better. Right, but it has to be secured and has to be connected to real value, and that's the problem right now. That we we know that NFT is original, but is that is it actually connected to real value, or is it not? Or is it someone lying to us? And it happens, you know, often that uh, someone claims to have NFT to someone, and then the real you know owner shows up and says, "Hey, you're not, you're not entitled. Hello, this is my property." Right. So I think as long as we, we all secure this part, I'm fine with NFT as a technology uh, that could be used for you know for the good of the market. I believe we're getting very close to the uh, differentiating value from the price, uh, but that's like that's completely different discussion. Uh, and uh, so, if so someone there is good side of NFTs, I'm so happy that it <laughs> it, it can be somehow implemented. Uh, yeah, so 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 I I would like to re- relate to one uh, thing to this uh, example from the very beginning uh, with this uh, uh, property uh, law. Um, are you? Uh, I have a question to you, Anna. Are you against mm-hmm. of contracts in general? Against of contracts? 
Contest, no, I yes. actually, you know, <laughs> actually create ones. <laughs> this is what I do. Okay. So I'm not, I, so I, even, I, even I, better. Are you against be of paper? The contract, you know? it's, it's... <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, uh, of course, yes. Uh, I, I know that you are a, a liar. So, um, so lawyer, that's contracts. a difference. L lawyer, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, you create contracts, and uh, that's true. So uh, for me, that uh, example of NFT uh, that you mentioned is just an example of a bad written uh, contract. So uh, what we have to do, we have to just uh, create better tools at this moment because um, just in my opinion, uh, OpenSea was created by developers. So they understand uh, the uh, property law in um, in a limited way let's let's call it in that way uh, so uh, just, yeah. just imagine uh, that we will add to OpenSea some new fields like for example uh, every field that you put in contracts every time when you sell property when you uh, sell artwork anything you want to sell uh, it changes everything I would say so and additionally I think that um, NFT has some advantages over a paper, just a paper or contract mm -hmm. written on paper. For example, you cannot um, hack this. Uh, it's well secured. Uh, it's uh, secured by the cryptography. Uh, it's, uh, there is a transparent way of uh, a tracking um, a full uh, you know, uh, supply chain behind every little transactions. So there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, different uh, advantages, uh, but I think that uh, uh, some examples just uh, present um, NFTs in a in a bad view because of the implementation, because of the contract, because of the uh, bad understanding of people who just uh, uh, send some money on not uh, well prepared uh, contracts or so something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, my opinion is that we are at the very beginning of the revolution and it's just the same like internet bubble, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, and it's like so, somebody would say like, hmm, we use uh, old modems, uh, we use uh, low internet connection right now and there is no Facebook, there is no Google, uh, it's a crap. Yeah, it's a crap for this moment, but it will uh, change uh, in the next uh, 10, day, 10 years, uh, 20 years, 15 years, I don't know. So uh, just imagine how NFT world will look like in uh, five years from now. I believe that at this moment uh, of the history of NFTs, we didn't mint it. Uh, we didn't mint uh, even 1% of the uh, whole amount of NFTs. Uh, that we will mint in 2025, uh, up to 2025. So yeah, it's a lot. And uh, we're just starting, uh, we're just developing, we're just thinking, uh, creating new concepts, new platforms, new marketplaces. And of course, we have to invite people like you uh, to, uh, to talk about risks, about factors, about legal issues and so on. Uh, because those developers who invented uh, NFTs, they were only just uh, developers, <laughs> so they didn't understand the uh, property law, and that's mm -hmm. that's the key um, point right now. I I believe, mm -hmm. but uh, according to the last year, I think that we start to understand the issue, and there are plenty of new projects uh, uh, that implements not only NFTs but also uh, uh, local uh, regulations, and that's that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I have, if, if I may, if I may. Absolutely. <laughs> like, oh, like oh, we we invited you to hear those oh, opinions. Yes. Because that's, that's very interesting what you're saying. And I agree that NFT um, could be having interesting future. But how would you address, technically even speaking, the problem that I have just mentioned? That of course, we, we can be, um, you know, secure about NFT itself, but let, let's be honest, NFT is just a tool that should be connected to some value, right? To something. And 
how do you address the question of where where this something is? Who should you know um, store it? Basically, I'm I'm using very plain language now, but yeah, okay. I'm hoping that you know what I mean. Like, how do we know that NFT is actually connected to someone something real or someone who claims to be entitled to NFT actually has the rights to it that he can transfer by NFT? Okay, so there are thousands of different strategies uh, that mm -hmm. we can uh, nowadays use NFT to uh, reflect a physical object. So one of those is uh, very natural for us, uh, which is just uh, create a certificate of ownership. So uh, the problem you mentioned Sounds is... Sounds very offline. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the problem you mentioned, uh, you mentioned is uh, the problem of uh, certificates of ownership. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not a new problem. It, it's not a mm -hmm. new problem. Uh, for example, I, I can possess um, a piece of paper with information that uh, uh, um, some flowers of Van Gogh, Van Gogh belongs to me. And somebody can just, uh, I can just destroy this piece of paper and what will happen? Or I can just destroy uh, some flowers and what will happen with this paper? So, uh, yeah, it's, this, this problem exists uh, mm, uh, without NFTs. But there are plenty of different strategies. Uh, for example, uh, this is one strategy. A another strategy is that, that's to, that we can create um, digital edition of uh, a physical ma masterpiece uh, certified by somebody who uh, has right to uh, has uh, has ownership of this mm -hmm. uh, physical object, and it's completely new version. It's not a copy; it's addition because it's uh, right now in a parallel world, uh, different you know uh, area of. Uh, um, uh, of, of mm -hmm. yes exactly and um, uh, so it's another strategy it and this strategy is very good for galleries for art galleries mm -hmm. uh, which uh, cannot you know uh, sell uh, artworks because it's a part of their collection and uh, they just cannot move it so uh, they create addition and certificate this addition of physical object and they sell it. And uh, there are a lot of uh, um, investors and collectors all over the world which are satisfied that they have a digital, digital object which reflects uh, this physical one. It's not connected. So let's, let's say that uh, one day this art gallery will explode and mm -hmm. all those artworks are, uh, are gone. Uh, so this uh, uh, collectors is uh, you know safe uh, that he has a, a digital artwork and it's not a problem for him it's even better uh, by the way because the uh, the price of this nft will increase probably so uh, that's another strategy uh, another strategy strategy is that we can just uh, uh, divide um, object into um, logically of course, not physically, but logically divide object into 100 different, you know, uh, fragments and um, sell to different people. And um, it's, 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 it's another, you know, strategy with uh, some, uh, some uh, details that we don't have time to discuss. But uh, what I want to say that uh, uh, it's, there is no one standard of thinking how we should define mm -hmm. NFT and the connection between uh, physical object and digital one. Uh, this market is uh, creating right now. So we are working on also, not also or not on uh, not only on um, uh, technology, but also on concepts. And what I just said is part of this uh, newborn uh, market. So mm -hmm. that's the answer. Partially, of course, because maybe mm -hmm. I um, didn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, pr predict uh, some brilliant uh, strategies that will burn in next year. I, I don't know. But uh, we have to look at this like on a tool. It's a canvas 2.0 for artists. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, go for it. Go sorry, for it. Uh, uh, so your, your analogy uh, 
can you can you clarify it for me if I understood it correctly? So it's something similar to uh, automotive industry. So there were like people who created the cars at the beginning. Obviously, there was no regulations because not many people had the cars. But the moment when it started growing, they, they there was a moment when people like government uh, and other institutions had to start regulating who can drive a car. Uh, which cars and, and and things like this so do you see that it will be it will be going in in, in that direction there is always a, this is the only way uh, because I don't remember the situation in the history uh, like for example oh let's create a law and then we will invent something <laughs> oh, fair oh. point <laughs> fair point usually it's, it's the other way around because uh, as you call us legal people we don't have <laughs> uh imagination that's true we usually laid behind innovations and that's that's correct about us and, and but thank you for those previous comments especially example fine art market which i think um has the biggest chance to be more civilized to get more civilized in many yeah. ways because you can actually uh contact and get to people the authors or others who are entitled to who possess copyrights right because this is what you need if you want to you know make make nft out of the work that is co uh, that is copyright protected you need to have an agreement with someone who is entitled to this right and yeah. this work when it comes to the copyrights and if you can do that and in a way certify that you have um, um, approval of such a person to create NFT and sell it, it's fine with me, as long as this first step, right, is there, and, <laughs> and of course, uh, that's not the end of the list, the copyright that you will need here, uh, you know, the, the transfer of copyright needs special form under Polish law, for example, written form, right, so that's another thing, it's not enough to buy and sell NFT as it does. So there's a number of issues here connected that you have to connect. In fact, modern technology with a old law to make it work, work together, right? So there's a number of things to, to foresee. I think this is possible to do. I'm not saying it's not. It's just what I'm against is this hype that we are facing these days when people mm -hmm. are buying NFTs thinking that they're buying right to create a movie. Uh, based on the book, or they're thinking that they, that they, they get they get the right to the music, why they don't, right? So and in fact they're paying a lot of money for nothing, legally speaking, nothing. <laughs> so and that's that's my um, uh, that's my concern here. Yeah, there's um, another case study. Um, maybe you heard about uh, Quentin Tarantino. He sells yeah. some, uh, yeah. Uh, some scenes from um, Pulp Fiction, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and he's then, trying to. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then Miramax just uh, came into the scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they had uh, the, 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 the lot for, for, for these materials. Yeah, and it's not against NFT. It's, it's against, uh, you know, um, lack of understanding. In this, yeah, in this area. there is yeah. a lack of understanding of copyright law here, uh, and yeah, not definitely. only copyright law, but trademark law and other inter intellectual property law. By the way, intellectual property law is actually it's a law that is that does not depend on the physical item. That's the thing; mm -hmm. it's the same concept, actually. Uh, you yeah. you don't have to have physical item to to be copyrighted entitlement, right? You, you just it, it's a matter of law, not the item. That's that's why it differs from other. Uh, branches of the law so uh, it's a good concept to be used but um what what i think we need is respect for the um, for the legal rules because mm -hmm. if you as you said that was this you know it's been created by developers who doesn't under who don't understand the idea of ownership in legal system so for example in in accordance for example to polish law you don't owe any virtual property in the game that you will create because it's not the thing that you can possess so and yeah. you know, this is a, like a starting point of very huge discussion that we may have here 
And one last point. I know, Adrian, you want to. <laughs> you want no, to no, stop no, me. no, 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 no. I, I, I don't want to stop you because I, I can see hear right. all of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, I, I only want to point out that we are already, we are here already 30 minutes in, and I believe that there will be ah, like two or okay. three follow ups to that. <laughs> uh, okay, so just one more comment about metaverse, because that's, that was the beginning of uh, also of this discussion. Uh, that's the area that the lawyers are really, we are having a headache about. Re really, really, this is something um, something that is coming, we don't quite see how it's going to look like. And what are you going to do with it? Because let's say the current example, I don't know if you heard about the woman who claimed to be gang raped in Metaverse. Yeah. Um, you know, she she frames it as a, as, as a, almost as the same act as in you know offline reality but and and the law it's not right it's not so what actually happened was it a, was it rape legally speaking no it wasn't there was no even physical contact so you cannot you know rape someone without physical contact but maybe the feeling you know the the, the psychological side of it was similar or the same mm -hmm. as if it happened in real world and these are huge challenges that we are facing as lawyers now, nowadays. Maybe. How about, um, okay, so maybe more um, more forward. Let's say we have this metaverse um, and we're all in there and where there are con contracts and there are laws, uh, there's a possibility to break them, right? Um, oh, always. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when <laughs> we break laws we in, in, uh, in real world, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we can get away with it. We can uh, go to the court, pay the fine, go to prison. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of touches our re our real reality. Um, how about we break something, um, you know, in metaverse? Should we be chased by the uh, I don't know Metaverse Republic of Mars or uh, or uh, no, actual yeah, real 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 <laughs> thing? Should we go to the metaverse prison or to? <laughs> Real That's a very good question. I don't know. <laughs> you shouldn't take off your Oculus to the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> like, and the other question on top of that, like we are in the metaverse, but the person who committed the crime uh, might be in the, I, I would say Malaysia, and the crime mm -hmm. was committed on the person that is in in the US. Which jurisdiction should? Uh, try to catch the 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 criminal. So, like the the questions here are 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 so many, and that's basically yes. why we wanted to hear all your opinions because you are the specialists. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I I don't think I have a good answer here because there's numbers of factors that um that we have to take into account to actually legally determine the situation first of all we would have to determine whether a crime was committed right that's it like, you know i'm talking about the rape rape <laughs> rape example right was it committed because um probably in accordance with the legal system of these countries even that you mentioned that would rape would you know require physical contact there was no physical contact so maybe there is some kind of harassment which would be closer i think to what happened legally right and if this harassment was done online, okay, uh, it, it could happen, right? It could happen. Uh, but then we have to see in the, in the international law regulation to actually determine which legal system would be uh, the one that should be taking care of this case. Uh, and th but, that, but now I'm talking about the reality, because of course you can commit a crime online, right? You, you, you can do it. But when it comes to metaverse and regulation and how meta is going to look on this, that's a completely different story, right? It's like Facebook and the slander or label, right? It's like, of course, you can be sued before, uh, in, um, before the court or Facebook can suspend your account, right? Or eliminate you as a user. This is the system we are having now, and we are facing growing discussion whether, for example, Facebook or other platforms are um, doing right job here. So, you know, it's 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 a huge problem. <laughs> Sorry, so I... There is one I, thing, uh, terms and conditions of the metaverse, and another thing that's uh, um, local law. 
Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. an international law probably <laughs> in this case. You know, international will lead to the local law at the end yeah, of the day, yeah. right? Because it gives you an example when which law one should uh, should be applied. But there are, in fact, two systems here, right? The law, as we know it, uh, as a common a common set of rules, and some kind of punishment or rules that concern the platform itself. And I wonder, mm -hmm. I really wonder, in ten years' time which of these will be more influential on people's life? Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, because we talk about uh, on the horizon, right? Uh, and I, I have read that uh, right after this, uh, this situation, uh, Mark Zuckerberg have uh, implemented a save button that mm -hmm. you can just click and you can very uh quick very fast you can just uh, escape from the metaverse this is one thing and another thing that they they had just uh, implemented some kind of social distancing <laughs> that we know from covid-19 <laughs> so, yeah really? yeah okay. it, it's it's a partial solution right now but mm -hmm. uh yeah legal part i don't know <laughs> Yeah, like the the Verge had the whole article about uh, the, the the physical physical boundaries around your virtual uh, avatar in 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 metaverse to to <laughs> protect uh, people from from harassment or that claim mm -hmm. of uh, virtual uh, rape. Uh, I think we have to skip a couple of questions and we'll be going to more like uh, uh, questions about technicalities. So that's probably uh, Wukash part. Uh, if if you can go with that question, probably. Sure, it's sure. Like the, um, the whole whole uh, discussion go into a completely unexpected way, and I'm very very happy about it because like listening to to both of your uh, your opinions uh, is 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 great, absolutely, and I believe that our listeners will will learn quite a lot from from this discussion, or at least they will know what to like focus on uh, if they're considered uh, by. Or yeah, what to what... check for God's sake before them, before they spend thousands. Maybe of maybe dollars. some recommendations on the sources we should uh, you know that are open mm -hmm. source and we can we can you know read from in case we want to get involved in some NFT transactions. Mm -hmm. uh, anything? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interdisciplinary thing, so you should. Uh create you, you should do your own research and focus not only on technical uh, aspects but also on legal as we discuss right now also on uh, some ethical aspects there are plenty of different uh, mm, vectors out there uh, but uh, for sure uh, it's part of the blockchain uh, revolution so be sure that you understand what is a uh, public key, private key? How to make it uh, in a in a how how to keep your uh, keys in a private way? How to use MetaMask, for example, because that's the standard right now nowadays. Uh, and just uh, yeah, do do your own uh, research according to some basics. Uh, definitely, when we talk about a secure way of keeping your digital assets. Because probably you will, uh, if if you if you don't know the basics, probably you will uh, you will, uh, yeah, be, get tricked. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Maybe somebody will hack you. Maybe somebody will um, steal your digital assets. So make your own uh, research, and uh, that's it. There are plenty nowadays. Uh, plenty of different uh, sources. Very good. Very high quality. I would recommend, of course. Um, Mm, official uh, documentations of those platforms that you are planning to uh, visit, uh, like for example Sandbox, like for example um, uh, Horizon or uh, X Infinity, uh, the Central Land. That that's good uh, way to start. There is also a crypto voxel, for example. So just uh, focus on uh, popular platform because. Uh, they have developed uh, some procedures and uh, probably they will help you. Probably they have documentation, they have people, they have staff. So uh, they will help you somehow. Uh, yeah, and that, that's, that's my piece of advice. 
Okay. Uh, a little bit on 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 top of that. So you 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 mentioned those uh, basics, and uh, so I know that was uh, probably uh, more uh, Wukash question, and he as he is a, a computer scientist. But like any technical limitations of those technologies that you you can mention that that we are aware now that uh, that probably startups and other organizations are working on uh, fixing that 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 uh, owners or or anyone considering buying nft or getting into a metaverse should should be aware of yeah there are plenty of uh, things that to, we should uh, take care of uh, as a, as a creators um but uh when i look on from the you know helicopter view <laughs> on whole market nft market today I see that uh, there is a problem with gas fees. So uh, minting uh, NFT on Ethereum uh, can cost uh, uh, hundreds of uh, dollars. It's it's too much. It's not eco friendly. Uh, we don't like it. Uh, it's it's a huge problem. Not also not 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 only because of uh, the cost, but also from from the uh, carbon footprint uh, perspective. It's it's pretty clear. Uh, it, but it will uh, it will be solved in the in the future. Maybe in next months. Maybe maybe in next uh, two years. I don't know. But it will it will be uh, solved. So this is one thing. Another thing is that uh, today, um, yeah, as I said, do your own research. But also uh, from the uh, from the perspective that you you should choose right blockchain, right platform. Uh, to mint your NFTs or to decide where you want to keep your digital assets. Because uh, uh, when we go back to, let's say, 2016 or maybe 17, uh, th th there was a very popular uh, blockchain called uh, EOS. And everyone everyone would say in 2017 that EOS will be Ethereum killer and it will be really, it's a gr really great uh, uh, technology and so on. And today, EOS is. Mm, I, I I wouldn't say that it it doesn't exist, but uh, uh, it's 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 no longer very you know serious player on on the in the game. So uh, it's very important to uh, choose right technology and right solution for your uh, for your needs. So yeah, gas fees. Uh, uh, oh, another thing is that. Uh, at this moment, uh, we don't have one single standard of blockchain, one single standard of uh, protocol behind metaverses, uh, one single standard of NFT. Uh, even inside of Ethereum, there are uh, two uh, very famous uh, standards. So, uh, yeah, it's the very beginning of, of this uh, whole revolution. And it, it will... Uh, it will be sold, as I said, but uh, uh, you should be aware that, uh, let's say, you will mint uh, NFT on uh, Ethereum. So you will have some troubles in the future to um, transfer to another chain, for example. And yeah, that, that, that can be potentially uh, be very problematic. Yeah, so uh, it's, 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 a, it's a deep topic, but I would uh, indicate those, those things. Okay, and uh, now uh, a little bit uh, going on the other side. So, uh, Anna, can you can you do you know or can you recommend any materials for mm -hmm. anyone involved uh, anyone involved or interested in learning a little bit more about the regulations that are around uh, uh, NFT or maybe crypto and blockchain in in mm -hmm. general? How that how that works? That's a huge subject. First of all, <laughs> honestly, there's no one place that was source that I could refer you to. And when it comes to regulations, there's no specific regulations on NFT, to my knowledge, anywhere in the world. But they, they you know, it doesn't mean that that that, that uh, it's gonna last this way. Probably, with you know, growing importance of this business, some regulation will arrive, but probably. Uh, in US, Japan, or maybe on EU, maybe on EU level, I wouldn't expect that to happen. For example, in Poland soon, definitely not. We are rather slower than faster when it comes to new technologies. So what you have to do, you have to, you know, keep your eyes open 
and, uh, uh, and that's, that's the one thing. Uh, secondly, you have to take into account that new technologies, um, cryptocurrencies, and so on, they've been regulated by anti-money laundering regulations you know, almost everywhere. So keep this in mind. This is the law that is binding. And thirdly, if you're a customer and someone who's been fooled, tricked, you can always ask for help of, of the lawyers, of course, uh, in, the, in, the, in the jurisdiction that you are in. And um, I know that um, these, uh, this matter is connected, especially with NFTs, has been concerned of many, many, uh, many bodies, administrations, bodies, authorities in a number of countries. For example, in UK, I think last time I heard it was UK was working on some kind of protection for the customers. So, uh, so I'll be looking for that. Um, but also, uh, it's always better to prevent than to cure, right? So, if you are if you are someone who is willing to invest into this kind of technology, make sure that you know what you invest into. Ask about legal, you know, situation of the other party. Does this person who sells you the work actually is entitled to do that? Yes, because but if only it, those money you can lost. <laughs> yeah, because if this person is not, then you you know uh, you buy nothing basically, yeah. and you have to also Get understand. The public key, <laughs> please. Yeah, Check and key, right. uh, of course, this is always you are you know people are doing crazy things. If you want to buy part of a singer, pop singer, Doda, go ahead. But you have to be aware that legally you you don't own her, you know, arm or leg. You know, so, so, <laughs> uh, it's not a certificate of ownership. <laughs> yeah, there is a certificate, but you know, it doesn't quite. Be it's not quite connected. It is creepy, in fact. But by the uh, way, <laughs> legally sell your body, right? So, uh, yeah. so if you are, you know, wondering about getting into this kind of transaction, maybe it's why it is wise to ask the lawyer. What does it mean? What what actual uh, results could be of such a transaction? Would it be any? Because maybe what you're gonna do, you're gonna invest a lot of money for something that it, it, it you know doesn't doesn't have any real value. And this is what I'd be very conscious about. Anna, would you rather would you rather buy a uh, part of uh, Doda Body or a uh, concept of love of Martika? <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, don't forget about uh, the latest uh, uh, latest uh, hot topic, which was uh, the startup that lets you tokenize your soul and sell yeah. the part of your soul. So, Polish, uh, Polish, Polish, Polish uh, startup, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's called speculation, I think, like clear, like, but, you know, and this is, just, it really it drives me crazy. Why people buy it, for God's sake? Why would you buy something that, you know, has no value, no no meaning. Like because I understand that people may think that they're buying a book and they can adapt it for a movie. I can see that that they may not understand the copyright law. But buying idea of love, for God's sake, that's you know that's so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> like, but I'm sorry, like, but as a, as a lawyer, can you um, can you prove that there is no soul? <laughs> Actually, yeah. I can. I think, like, yeah, so... you know, legally speaking, there is no so. so I don't have to prove it. <laughs> we yeah. don't have souls. So. <laughs> Sorry. Done. I think that's that's pretty much the the perfect uh, uh, like <laughs> happy finish ending. of this uh, happy, happy ending, ending of this uh, conversation. But uh, I. Uh, I, I have to say it because uh, there was a, a little bit of uh, fake modesty from from uh, Bartosz, uh, and and I I, I I want to recommend it for anyone that like as as you said wants to learn a little bit of basics. Uh, this is something what I did, and uh, there was a course on on blockchain actually on the Polish uh, e-learning platform called uh, Eduweb that was actually explaining the the basics of uh, blockchain and also. True. <laughs> Should have prepared that earlier, but maybe for someone who doesn't want to deal with the code, there is a blockchain in 25 steps. There's book uh, mm -hmm. both in, in Polish and uh, uh, in English. Like obviously, the original was in English, so it's it's kind of, I think, probably I'm wrong, but uh, it's a good uh, entry step to understanding uh, a lot of concept behind those technologies. 
And uh, I, I think we'll be finishing this discussion, although we had plenty of more questions, but we don't want to keep you all here all night and probably we still wouldn't be able to to get on, on the same ground with uh, uh, every single topic. Uh, but I would like to thank uh, my co-host and especially to my uh, fantastic speakers. Uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, thank you, Bartosz. And uh, if you want to say something, uh, now is your, is your time. NFTs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I just, you know, uh, remember, there's no soul that you can buy. <laughs> so, no, just legally speaking, just be aware, be, be conscious. Just, just it. Okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, thank you, uh, Wukash, for for joining me. And as I said at the beginning, there was was uh, the 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 follow up to to the question uh, to the to the panel that we had at uh, Poland 2.0, and which Adrian uh, was hosting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like by accident, but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to listen to to the first part, uh, please go to uh, Poland 2.0 uh, YouTube, where you can also find uh, other uh, panels that were there. Uh, I think it's all in Polish, but do you have uh, uh, subtitles for uh, for? Uh, there might be uh, subtitles. I'll have to. Check. Or if not, I'm pretty sure the YouTube can auto generate the yeah, subtitles in English now. So. So thank you very much and thank you to my co-hosts and thank you to uh, you, uh, Anna and Bartosz. Thanks, thank Anna. You. Thanks, Bartosz. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.